Adams and welcome to episode 12 of Mark's Mess Podcast. We're with my daughters Charlotte Hello. and Catherine. Good day. We look at the <laughs> world of Geekery using the alphabet as our guide. And this I month it is. You can ask well, Adam, since when have you turned Australian? I don't know. Well, this month we're going to use the letter J, but we've got things to talk about first. What episode number did I say this was? 113. 12. Right. Uh, 12. You do realise the script is right in front of us. You can just look yeah, at it. Okay. I'm trying to see why you're asking me that. What does that mean? We've done one episode a month. So how, how long have we been doing it for? A year. So this is our one year anniversary. You two have been podcasting properly, not just being guests on the podcast for a year. How do you feel about being a podcaster now? I don't know. Right. First of all, Charlotte... Have you told any of your friends in school? Yes. Who have you told? Charlotte. No, no, no. Apart from the ones I forced you to tell because they were around here. So you basically haven't told many people. Catherine, have you told any of your friends? I don't think so. Okay. I have told all of my friends. No, but I probably forget. Have you got any friends? I have got friends. I've told both of my friends. <laughs> right. But but that, that is a fantastic achievement for you two being the, the young ages that you are. What, five and seven? Well, you used to be five and seven. I give up counting now. There's other news. First of all, the podcast <laughs> awards. We are not just Mark Smith's podcast. We are Mark Smith's podcast, the award-winning podcast. <laughs> are you saying we're Muppets? <laughs> Right. No, it's not your friend of the podcast and Santa impersonator, Professor Allen has done his <laughs> annual podcast awards on his blog, Allen's Eyes and Ears. So there's different categories. There was a favorite podcast that he guested on. There was a best produced podcast, uh, off into the sunset award of a podcast that don't seem to be going anymore. The Where Have You Been All My Life award, ones he just uh, got into the podcast. Oh, pod faded but not forgotten. Pod fade is when a podcast just disappears because, well, various reasons. This is a, this is a hobby for most people. So someday this podcast could just stop because life gets in the way. Uh, Back from the Dead Award uh, podcasts that have so- come up. There's favorite overall podcast, and we won the category best new podcast of 2016 because we only started a year ago. Okay, do you want to know who the runners-up were? Yes! Okay, the, there was The Fear of God. Never heard of it. I haven't heard of that one before. Is it Jaws? I do listen to that. Never heard of that. They, they review movies with the Jaws scale. There were four Jaws movies. Jaws, Jaws 2, Jaws 3, and Jaws the Revenge. You and they, they Jaws, the first Jaws is really good. Second Jaws is okay. Third Jaws is... Eh, and the fourth Jaws is rubbish. There's the podcast Grey Stoked. Which I'm guessing, it, it. well, I'm guessing it's about Tarzan. Why? Because Tarzan's name is Lord Greystoke. Oh, that's Tarzan. No, but his English name is Greystoke. Does it have grey hair? No, oh. uh, he doesn't have a stoke either. It's a stoke. Uh, a bit like a weasel. There, a there's weasel. what I don't quite know. Uh, uh, Jig Eyes and Jedi, which is about the Clone Wars. Mister McGill like that. Yep. Uh, the Parliament of Rooks. What's that? What's a rook? A rook is like a crow. I'm going to have to look up these. So basically, all about birds. There's one of the best named podcasts, Pod Dylan, about the... the well, Bob D- Bob Dylan was a singer, and he still is a singer. And he went from the 60s, and he still goes. He's very good, uh, a very good wordsmith, very good at doing the words. And this guy has done a podcast about him, so he calls it Pod Dylan instead of Bob Dylan. Bob! Okay. Uh, Radio Free GOP. Yep. Don't know. And uh, Zen Ozik Xenophiles. Never that. heard of that. Well, I, I've kind of heard of uh, that podcast. It's uh, Darren and Ruth do a podcast about, uh, they do several podcasts and we'll come on to that in a wee minute. And, and they do one about different, uh, pod, different comic book creators. 
Thank you very much to Professor Alan. I did say on our Mark Smith podcast Facebook site that thanks to Alan Middleton and that was an honour. And he replied that first of all, we earned it. And second of all, that we spelt honour wrong. We didn't spell honour wrong. Honour in the UK is H-O-N-O-U-R. In yes. America, it's H-N-O-R. They don't use the U. Quite a few words. Like colour. Like colour. Right. Anyway, what has... Oh, yes. And... Not only is it our year anniversary, not only are we podcast award winners. Not but, only are you wearing a Star Wars jumper. But we What's that gonna do with it? But we also have had mail. We have had an email. Charlotte, would you like to read out our mail? Yes, I would. Dear Mark, Charlotte and Catherine. Catherine, Charlotte. Charlotte and Catherine. Catherine, Charlotte. Charlotte, Catherine. Hello. <laughs> Recently, Rob and I got a new car. Our old car got to the point where it was being held together by little more than hope and chewing gum. The new car has Bluetooth, and as a result, I've been listening to Mark's Mess podcast. I'm making my way through the Geek Alphabet episodes and really enjoying them. I laugh a lot that your favourite British word was... Buttons! But I did hear in the D episode that you didn't believe that you knew someone who had fish fingers and custard for their birthday. Who had I attach proof. It's sponge cake covered in icing and rolled in mashed up hobnobs. Tasty. Also, the little boy who lives next door to us has a Doctor Who. Had a Doctor Who birthday party a couple of years ago and one of the games was how many fish fingers in custard could you eat in a minute. Mm. Surprisingly, they don't taste too bad. Try it. Catherine, I'm also delighted you like adipose so much. A favourite of mine, so I've also attached a photo of our wedding cake, which was delicious, and we've kept the adipose on top because we don't want to eat them. Looking forward to listening to more alphabet. Keep up the geek work. I want to see this fish. Okay, thank you very much, Caroline. Caroline is a family friend, but also a podcast. I can't see. Does it look real? Yeah. <laughs> These are two photos that uh, Caroline has sent in, and we'll put them on our Facebook, on our Twitter feed, and maybe our uh, our podcast if, if page. You Thank you very much, Caroline. Uh, it was wonderful to hear from you. I'm very glad you are liking our podcast. Uh, as I say, we'll put these pictures up so other people can see. I think it's fantastic that your wedding cake had the adipose on it, and the fish fingers and custard sounds interesting. But it wasn't really fish fingers and custard. It was cake made to look like fish fingers and custard. Yeah, pro- the custard was probably custard. Yeah. I don't think it was fish sauce made to look like custard. <laughs> That'd be weird. If you would like to contact us just as Caroline did, you can by email. My marksmess at gmail.com. On Twitter. At Marksmess Podcast without the T. Our webpage, marksmesspodcast.blogspot.com and our Facebook page, marksmesspodcasts. Okay, thank you very much. We do enjoy getting uh, a mail and we enjoy having a wee bit of a natter online with people. Our intro here is, what, 10, 15 minutes long uh, and that's just the beginning. We're going to talk a wee bit about things that we have read and watched and then after the break, what we're going to do is talk about our J for the month. Over the past uh, few months, I've, I've seen a lot about Trekker. Trekker, I, there's a podcast called Trekker Talk, and I thought it was about Star Trek, obviously. But it's not. There's an 80s comic called Trekker about a female bounty hunter. Who, That's a bounty hunter. Uh, they, they go out and try and capture people that the, the police have said should be behind in jail. Okay, and... Basically, they're like police people. Sort of. They're like police people. And uh, police women and men, police persons, personages of police abilities and paid for. This is police. Police release me day by day. After getting a bit of money at Christmas, I thought I'd go on to Comicsology and buy the Trekker comic. That means I could listen to Trekker talk as well. So there's a picture of the hero. Mercy Sinclair. She's wearing chocolate. It does. Really? <laughs> okay, this is in the cover of Trekker Talk. No, Talk. Really? Okay, I, I've enjoyed Trekker because it reminds me a lot of the 1980s, uh, 2000 AD stuff too, with Strontium Dog and uh, Judge Dredd and Rogue Trooper and that type of thing. It is black and white comics. 
and which you two probably go, Ugh. I mean, there's a panel from it, the panel I'm reading currently. Well, black and white can give you a lot more depth. You can do a lot with just monochrome, two colours, black it's, and white. It's much easier to draw with pencil rather than colour it in as well, well. What they do is they pencil it and then ink it. And if they wanted colour, the, the third process would be for a colourist to come along and decide what colours go where. So it's also cheaper? It's probably a bit cheaper and faster as well because colouring and guessing would t- could take quite a while. Do they do it on the computers? Nowadays they would do it on computers. I started listening to Trekker Talk as sort of every time I, I read a, a story in Trekker, I'd listen to Trekker Talk with Ruth and Darn. And I actually wrote off to them uh, to tell them how much I enjoyed it. And they wrote back saying how much they enjoy our podcast. So they listen to us. So we say hello to them. Hello, Ruth and Darren. Good night, night. They also said that at some point they might come to Northern Ireland. Northern and we could Ireland? Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. Say orange. Orange. Yeah. <laughs> and, they, they, uh, and there is a chance we could meet up, and that would be lovely. We, and you're um, not supposed to meet up with strangers. It's okay, I met them on the internet. On the internet? Ah, well, we'll, we'll sort that out. We'll, we'll make sure they're not too weird. They're very nice. Their podcast is really good. It's really well written, and they have a lot of background Our information. Isn't even written. So yeah, how much preparation did you do for this, Charlotte? I got the book out of my bedroom. You got the book out of your bedroom. I anyway, sat here. That's something I've been enjoying a lot, and I would recommend uh, finding Trekker and Comicsology or wherever else you can find it, and delving into that world. It's really fun. Trekker comics are written and created and drawn by one person, Ron Randall, and um, and he has help with that as well. And he's still he, Weasley. and he's still and he's still creating and he's <laughs> and he's still creating them to this day. <laughs> so go along to uh, trekkertalk.com to find what Riff and Darn are talking about, and they do other things as well. Trekkertalk.com. Charlotte, what have you brought into our lovely studio here that you have been, that geeky stuff that you've been enjoying over the past while? I have been reading Time Travelling with a Hamster. And who is that by? Ross Welford. Okay, this is an actual, it's one of those weird comics that it's doesn't have pictures. It's a paper book. It's a paper book, not like my digital it's ones. A novel. Here, this is paper. Okay, we're beginning to sound like somebody else's podcast who keeps turning pages. Anyway. What? <laughs> I don't get it. It's okay. You, you'd have to listen to podcasts to know. Yeah, right. Well, you do listen to tell, podcasts. Tell us a wee bit about what the a book is about, about hamsters and time travel. Well, it says in the front, my dad died twice, but only the second time was my fault. And then on the back is the blurb. I suppose if you'd asked me before, I, I'd have said a time machine might look something like a submarine or perhaps a space rocket. And said, I'm looking at a laptop and a tin tub from a garden centre. This is my dad's time machine, and it's about to change the world. Well, mine at any rate. Uh, Al Chaudhry has a chance to save his dad's life, but to do it, he must travel to 1984. Back to the future. No, back to the past. 1984. I was. I turned 13 in 1984. I'm 13. Wow. What uh, what did you think about the book? Is there time travel in it? There is. There's quite a lot of time travel. Okay. I think the book's very good. The hamster that's in the title, it comes into it because for his birthday, Al gets a hamster and, and he called the hamster Al and Shearer. His stepdad, which is mum now, when his dad died when he was seven, um, his stepdad loves football and to please his stepdad because... His stepdad really wanted a son, but instead he has a grumpy teenage daughter. And to please his stepdad, he calls the hamster Alan Shearer after a famous footballer. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, he's a famous footballer. <coughs> you said he's a he. He wanted a boy, but he got a grumpy stepdad. Yeah, yes, but the stepdad has a, has a daughter as well. Oh. Yeah. And does he time travel? He time travels quite frequently. Oh, right. Does he mess up the time stream? Yes. Oh, right. 
he goes back and he meets his dad and he tells his dad his dad dies because of a piece of metal shoved up his nose when he was 13 or 12. Okay. And the doctors took the metal out, but they mustn't have took all the metal out. So slowly the piece went into his brain and he died because of it. So it's a bit like Tony Stark with the piece of metal near his heart? Mm, no, not really. <laughs> Tony Stark didn't have a pit in when he was like 12. Okay. So he goes back to when his dad is about 12. Yes, so Al... So basically, his dad is my age. Al goes back and he then again kills his dad because his dad has a... Sorry, is this meant to be a happy children's book? His dad has a go-kart, but by how he got the piece of metal shoved up his nose was because the go-kart ran into a brick and the brick, then he went flying off the go-kart into a metal gate. Uh, uh Uh-huh. And to stop him, Al moves the brick, but then he lives about side the seaside in that time they didn't have railings along the seaside so his dad went into the sea and then he kind of drowned in the sea so he killed him twice so then when alan al goes back into the future with alan shearer then nobody nobody knows he exists but he looks identical to when his dad was 12 and al was 12 so al goes to his grandpa byron thinking that he will remember him or some sort because his grandpa Byron remembers a whole load of stuff. He remembers stuff from when he was like three years old because he uses like a memory technique right. and all. His grandpa thinks he is Al. He is his dad. That sounds like something I might even read. So would you recommend this for people to read? Would, would, should any, I read it? Any age, yeah. Any age. If this was to be made into a movie or TV, which would it be better as a movie or, or TV series? TV series because it would give more suspense. Oh, I'm the longer of a story. Right. Uh, have you read any more of Ro- Ross Welford? No. No. Have you looked for more Ross Welford? No. <laughs> okay. I M- maybe if you find someone you like, it would help if you find more. But fantastic that you found a book. Oh, I've got a comic book. You've got a book. Catherine, what have we got for you? Descendants. Oh. It's the children of Disney people. We go to school but like together. evil Disney people. And they all go to school together. I don't even know if they do go to school because they're bad. Well, so they it's, might at skip a, it's, at a, it's set at a school. I've seen it's half of it. It's not a school. It was a school. There's a school in it, but it's not set at the school. Okay, go on. Who's in it? Um, There's Mal, who's Maleficent's daughter. There's Evie, who's Evil Queen's daughter. Evil Queen from where? The White. Okay. There's Jack, who's Jafar's son, and Carlos, who's Cruella de Vil's son, and he's scared of dogs. I don't blame him after what his mum did. Tell us a wee bit about the plot. They live in the Isle of the Lost. Like, all the villains were put there by Belle and whoever hit her husband is. The, that the would beast. be the beast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that name rings a bell. And then... <laughs> Um, but he's not the beast in this, he's a man. Yeah, because he, at the end yeah. of the movie, he became not a beast. And they're all banished there, and there's like a border around it, so they can't get out, because um, they were so, because they're evil. It's like a spell to keep them and in. And then, they, the Belle and the king live in Oradon, and they have a son called Ben, and then he's go- going to be king, so he decides to give them... To the let bad guys, children, a chance to go to school. Yeah. And then it's like a boarding school, so they have to stay there. So it's a wee bit like Harry Potter. No. Yeah. But apart from that, no. Uh, and children in the boarding school. But they're evil. No, well, some of them are evil in but Harry Potter. at the end, yeah. should I tell them? Well, well I, think, I think we shouldn't tell them. Okay. But I, I think, right, I watched the sort of last half with you, and it actually wasn't too bad. It, huh. it felt like one of those Disney TV shows that they have, like, um, I don't know. Jesse. Jesse. Oh, yeah, Carlos is from there. Carlos is from Jesse. The actor. Yeah. Yeah, we've realised that. The actor, of course, we know that. But uh, would you recommend this? Yeah. Would you have liked this to have been a TV series? There's actually... There is actually a um, TV series thing on YouTube. Based on this? Oh, that's quite good. But only it's like animated and all. Ah, but that's fantastic. I think it is uh, great to have all these things to encourage our minds to think and, fantasy. And, th- and there's a dog called Dude in it. Dude? 
Not it's doo-doo. The canvas bag. The what? The canvas? canvas. Ah, right, that means nothing to me. It's basically the school's dog. Yeah. Oh, the campus dog, okay. not canvas. <laughs> canvas is and what you do. Yep. Carlos is scared of him, he climbs up a tree, but then he's very friendly, and then, and then they like each other. And is there a smoochy smoochy time? There's yes. no smoochy, I think there's smoochy smoochy in it. Right, I, don't I don't like that bit. I didn't think he did. Anyway, what was I going to say? Yes. As we come up to our break, we're going to play two trailers. One for Trekker Talk to let you know where to find that excellent show. But also one is for Justice League, the Bwahwaha, Justice League International Bwahwaha podcast, which is run by the Irredeemable Shag. The Justice League International is now 30 years old and uh, Shag had an interview with one of the creators of Justice League International. It was a fantastic interview and I recommend you go and listen to it because after the break we're going to be talking about my experiences with the Justice League and who exactly are the Justice League for our J for our podcast. So as we go off and have a cup of tea, a slice of cake and a bit of celebration for our first anniversary, you go off, listen to these trailers and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. See you in a minute or two. See you later, alligator. Goodbye. Trekker Talk. A fan podcast devoted to the adventures of 23rd century bounty hunter Mercy St. Clair from the pages of Trekker Comics by creator, writer, and artist Ron Randall. I'm Darren. And I'm Ruth. We'll be discussing the stories, characters, and art in this excellent retro sci-fi adventure series, as well as having side conversations about other areas of fandom. We hope you'll join us as we travel from the dangerous back streets of New Gallif to the depths of outer space and everywhere in between. Trekker Talk is available at podbean.com and on iTunes and Stitcher. Find us at trekkertalk.com. Justice League International, Blah Ha Ha Podcast. A new monthly show chronicling the adventures of the JLI era by Keith Giffen and J.M. DeMatteis. We'll be going issue by issue, in release order, tackling the core Justice League title, Justice League Europe, and the quarterly book. Along the way, we'll take time out for special episodes covering various spin-offs, cartoon appearances, the infamous TV pilot, and much more. So join me in an ever-changing roster of guest hosts as we celebrate your favorite JLI members, such as... Martian Manhunter. Batman. Dr. Fate Black Canary Fire Ice Maxwell Lord Oberon Captain Marvel Rocket Red Captain Adam Mr. Miracle Guy Gardner Booster Gold Blue Beetle Nort And many, many more. Justice League International Blahaha Podcast coming March 2016 as part of the Fire and Water Podcast Network. Want to make something of it? Welcome back. We are trying to cover the letter J. We haven't actually done any J's yet. We're going to do one J, and the biggest J would be the Justice Joker. Justice League of America. Justice League of America. Hoy. Right. <laughs> okay. I know, Charlotte. You have watched a lot of Justice League cartoons. And Young Justice. And Young Justice, Which and that technically is a Y, but it has a Justice in it, so it's a J. Yeah. Why J? Why? Why? I don't know why J. <laughs> okay. You're funny. <laughs> Thank no. you. I didn't grow up seeing any cartoons of Justice League. There was one cartoon called Super Friends. And <laughs> why? This is so cheesy. This is I, I think it so was quite perfect. cheesy. This would be the front cover. <laughs> That's really great doing that on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and but I never saw it. I don't think it was shown in Britain, <laughs> but it was a big thing in America. You hear people on the American podcasts talking about it quite a lot. Also in the nineties, there was a Justice League live action TV movie. Now this was for a very little budget. I think they all used their powers twice or something like that, which had Green Lantern and the Flash and uh, Martian Manhunter and people like that. So, but what I'm going to talk about Justice League of America are is the Justice League of America that I knew through comics. 
What do you mean they use the superpowers twice? Because the budget and the TV show wouldn't allow them. Basically, were... like Green Lantern uses Green Lantern ring only twice in the whole thing. It was probably a wee bit more than that, but there was a whole lot of superhero sort of pi- TV pilots that sort of fell through because they didn't have the budget to do big things. Uh, Generation X, which was an offshoot of the X-Men. So we're going to go through the comics that I knew of Justice League of America. <laughs> Justice League of America started in 1960, March 1960, in the pages of Brave and the Bold, number 28. Okay, and here is the cover of Brave and the Bold, number 28. Okay. Oh, it's them star things. Yep, star an episode about them. It looks like it's a hip no eye star. Well, he basically, did. basically they have little mini stars and they go like on your face like this. Ah! And then you get, and then they become one. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder Woman just like this. <laughs> yeah, with her <laughs> last. Doing a weird dance move. Who, who do you see in the cover? What here is Junior? Um, uh, Wonder Woman, the fast Marsh, guy, Catherine, Martian Man, Hunter, the Flash, Wonder Woman, Wonder Aquaman, yes. and the uh, Green Lantern. Right, that's quite and good. And you see a star thing. And it's only ten cents. That's, yeah, that's a bargain. That was back in 1960. That's a bargain. No, who do you not and see? And there's a stamp on it. You don't see Superman, Superman Batman, Batman yep. Robin. You don't see Superman. Robin's not in the Justice League. No, he was. Well, I don't know. Teen that. Titans. Oh yeah. And, and Young Justice. And Young Justice. You don't see Superman or Batman because they weren't in it originally. This was 1960, and the legend has it. In fact, not only legend has it, but some of the stories in books have it that the reason <coughs> Fantastic Four got made is because the publisher of Marvel Comics and the publisher of DC Comics, Justice League is DC Comics went to play golf together and the DC Comics one boasted about his new comic, The Justice League of America, bringing together people who had their own comics. I mean, you have uh, Martian Manhunter came in 1953, Wonder Woman, uh, she had a resurgent in 58. and the green, she Wonder Woman was about since about 1941, I think. And... Ooh. Uh, I'm sure she's wearing pumps. But superhero like comics... Ballet. That must be a lot of DH cream. Well, what? Superman, uh, sorry, superhero comics didn't uh, became less popular in the late 1940s, 1950s, and it only started to get more popular in the late 1950s. Still a lot of DH cream. Yeah. But uh, the, the publisher of Marvel Comics thought, I'm going to get on this action of superhero teams. So oh. he challenged Stan Lee to make a superhero team, and that's how Fantastic Four came. Of DC Comics or Marvel? And Marvel. Maybe uh, because they have superpowers and they don't get old. Or maybe because they're just characters in the book. Maybe. Maybe. I remember on a, Comic. TV, on a TV show, a woman didn't know who Batman's sidekick was. Okay. <laughs> or something. It was on, uh, something it was like on um, Top Class and they brought the teacher in and they asked them. Like, no, it, it wasn't that. It was. It was a different was thing. Was it a quiz show? Yeah. Yeah. So, no, it wasn't the, no it wasn't the one you're thinking of. Anyway, back back to me talking. I haven't read many of these. The original team up team, where you had your own the characters having their own books as well as teaming up, was just a Society of America. I have read the very first one of that from the nineteen forties. And do you know what they do in the comic? Do they team up to fight someone? No. They team up to tell stories about what they were doing. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Worst comic idea ever. Justice League of America was uh, began being written by Gardner Fox and it got its own title. Guy Gardner. What? Guy Gardner. Gardner Wait. Fox. No, there's a man who wrote the comics. Fantastic oh. name. You'd think he would be a superhero. Yeah. So it was night yeah. as um. Yeah. Wait. So his parents named him Gardner. So yes. So his first name. Okay. <laughs> That's a Don't. rubbish name. Oh, that's a bit unfair. There's r- names you have not come across that you may think are rubbish. Like but what? there's people like who will what? hear Charlotte. Well, that's a bit like weird. Like what? Mine's a Victorian name. So smart when it's mine. Well, yours is older you're, than Victorian. Yours. That means you're... you're... <laughs> right, like Excuse what? What me? names will I hear and think, Ooh. I don't know, but you will. Like? Siobhan. See, it's a popular Irish name. It's Irish. Yes, and boy, you will not believe how it's spelled. I've got no idea how it's spelled. Like Kambinshinta. That's not even a name. It could be. It's not. I'm gonna call my child that. <laughs> Kambinshinta. Yeah, and I'm gonna. Is, and I'm gonna be embarrassed, embarrassed to be at something. Oh, that's unfair. <laughs> Just because your uncle's embarrassed to be your gr- uncle. Just because your uncle's embarrassed to be your uncle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. Anyway. <laughs> 
back to the Justice League. The first Justice League comics I bought, because I was more of a Marvel person than the DC person, was the Justice League International, their first graphic novel. I bought the second one as well. Uh, it was years before they published anymore. Justice League International Still came happen. apart in May 87. Yes, and this is what the ju- cover of the first Justice League International comic is. Who do you recognize? Uh, Batman. Yep. Where's Batman? The, 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 there. the one in the coil. Uh, it's H- him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't say him. Oh, right. You have to say oh, the, the name. The guy with the hair. Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner, well done. How did you know Guy Gardner? Who's he? Cutler Clever. He's uh, Green Lantern. There He's are many. Grumpy one. No, he- yeah. All right. If he were a dwarf, he would be called Grumpy. <laughs> Who else? Um, Wanna make something out of it? Oh, that, mi- that guy with the cross thing. The guy with the cross <laughs> thing point? The one with the gold right. helmet. Oh, well, he, okay. Okay. he's called Dr. Fate. Aye, that one. Right, yeah. also on the cover is, you pointed to Captain is Marvel, Martian, Catherine. Is there Martian yeah. Manhunter, the yellow guy? That guy there is Martian I've, Manhunter. I've seen him. I, don't, I have no clue who that is. She is that is, Wonder Woman? That is Black Canary. She's I, got I, a thought, Sonic I thought screen. that. The guy at the back is Mr. Miracle, and you've got the Blue Beetle in there, as well as uh, Dr. Light. The Blue Beetle's the one beside Batman. Yeah, the one in blue. That one? No, the other one. That one? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, he looks weird. He looks like a. But, so these were these were a lot of second stringers. <laughs> who's, ones. The, who's the girl beside the Blue Beetle? Doctor F- Doctor Light. Who's the Ebenezer Scrooge guy? Oberon. Yeah. He he was an assistant to Mister Miracle or Mister Miracle's manager. Who's Mister Mr. Miracle? Miracle was an escape artist. He, so, he sounds like a uh, Mister Man. Mister mm. Man. Do 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 do. Bum bum bum. Anyway, um. What? So these were second stringers. This was uh, <laughs> Justice League being brought out again and re- redone, but probably the first time since uh, the 1960s. And they weren't allowed to use Superman. They weren't allowed to use Wonder Woman. But they made the best of what they did. This was quite a funny comic. And it relied more on characterization than it did on bashing up the, the bad guy. And in fact, there were some... And destroying the town. And destroying the town. And there were some editions of the comic that were they didn't fight anyone. And it became famous, this, uh, for uh, things like bah ha ha What? There's a big laugh. bah ha ha Big, uh, and... Oh, that's what that podcast is. Yes! I never understood that. Oh! That's, uh, the Irredeemable Shag does the podcast of Justice, Justice League, League International bah ha ha podcast. And it's very good, and it has different people on each week, and they do a cover. Right, we're not promoting them, come on. Are we not? Oh, because we already did that earlier yeah. on. Okay. Oh, uh, where was I? Yes, Oreos. First time I heard about Oreos was in this comic. What? Yeah. You're you, the biscuit you like. You can get Oreo oh, thins yeah. now. I still no, like, I, I still like that Oreo thin. thin. I still basically thin Oreos. It says in the name. I steal everything <laughs> she likes. She does. Yeah. Like I used to not like them, then I like them. Now she gets like none of them. Right. We've still got you Oreos. Don't, you don't have we got, yes, we've got, got Oreos. double cream ones? I don't know. I think that's the only one you eat, isn't it? Well, I like the ordinary, but... The, but the, the chocolate, chocolate ones are nice. I hate the chocolate ones. But you, by... get, you get mint ones, you get peanut <laughs> butter ones, you get ordinary ones, you, you get, get strawberry chocolate ones. ones, you get strawberry cheesecake ones, you, you get, get caramel get... ones. I've, get said, mint. I've said mint. Have you? Anyway. Yeah, you did. Sorry, we're just naming Oreos. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you could get um, custard cream. Can you not get custard cream? I said that. That's peanut butter. Oh. Oh, oh, you can get custard cream ones as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, why just buy custard creams? I know, custard, custard creams are the so best. It's so un-British to make something custard cream when it's not a custard cream. What about Oreo ice cream? Oreo oh, ice cream, there's, there's it's Oreo, not that bad. Oh, those egg things. Oh, yes, those, like, you know the way you get the egg? They're, like, that size, about the size but, of a cream. Oh, that, <laughs> that, that size, and nobody can No, about the size of a cream egg. And, and you bite egg. off the top, and then you you ha- it comes with a little spin, and uh, you spin out the. Uh-huh. I hope they yeah, still do the Oreo ones. I hope they around. still do the ordinary ones. Oh, and the chocolate ones. Will we get back to the podcast? <laughs> okay. Sorry, we're discussing no, no, Easter no. already. After Justice League uh, International, I bought uh, Grant Morrison brought out a Justice League America JLA. They called it in ni- January ninety seven, and this is the cover of it. A lot Ooh. more serious. Who do you recognise? You, you should. Um, um, no, let me, let me let me say. You let Catherine. Let Catherine you go. You said the first one. Uh, Batman. Batman. There's Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. There, <laughs> there's Superman, Superman with very long hair. There's yeah. the fast guy. The Flash. Flash. There's the green guy. Oh, well, you can't green just say the green guy. There's uh, green, the green with the red. Yeah. 
There's a weird person. The Martian, Martian Manhunter. Man I have the clue. Is that, that Cyborg is. or something? No. Is that Thor? No. Thor is Marvel, <laughs> not DC. Thor plus Cyborg equals that guy. That is Aquaman. What? Oh, what? He's covered in metal. We, we, don't, don't, we, don't, we don't know about Thor metal. in skill. That's just weird. As, no, in, the, as yeah. in the Viking Thor. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, no, as in Marvel comic store. This JLA took itself a lot more Probably seriously too. than Justice League International. <laughs> uh, it was written by the British guy Grant Morrison, and it ran from we'll 90 British. 97. And I collected a lot of the graphic novels of it. I didn't keep them; I sold them eventually. I'm sorry, I kept a few. What's a graphic novel? Uh, a it's novel. a collection. Well, it's maybe I shouldn't say a graphic novel. Book. Yeah, a collection of comics. Okay. Uh, I, cl I collected the JLA like the collections. Like oh, the Jack the Yeah. Like Jack the Wasp. <laughs> but I also, you mentioned earlier on Young Justice. Yes. And I collected that in the collection form. It was a I year... have all the characters' names. Okay, who have you got? Well, this is from the cartoon, I think. Okay, go for it. Who do you know? Aqualad, Robin. Well, I'm just kind of just read Justice them all This is Justice League out? International cartoon. You read Young them Justice. all out. Young Justice. Aqualad, Robin, Kid Flash, Superboy, Miss Martian... Ar Artemis, Zatanna, Speedy, Rocket, Aqua Girl, Batgirl, Beast Boy, Blue Beetle, Bumblebee, Guardian, Lagoon Boy, Wonder Girl, Impulse, Speedy, Tempest, and Static. Yeah, a lot of these are legacy characters. That's all the ones that Wikipedia said. Oh, right, so you actually did research? Yes, I did. I said I did research. Amazing show. And the ones in the comic, I think, are Robin. Kid Flash is he in the comic, or there's some sort of Flash. Kid, Kid Flash is in the comic. Uh, Superboy. Yeah, it's impulsive. Bat, um, no, um, sorry, you you've read a wee bit of Justice, uh, Young Justice, yes. the Peter David comic, and it's impulse in that. Yeah, and there's Wonder Girl in it, and, and Robin, Artemis. and Artemis. That's the first one. Oh yeah, Artemis, the one with the arrows. Yes, basically the green arrow girl. girl. <laughs> but but. I, I think Justice League uh, is uh, a key team because without Justice League, you wouldn't have had the Marvel explosion with the What's Fantastic that? Four the, uh, and all those coming straight afterwards. You wouldn't have great team-ups. It's a fantastic comic uh, from the early uh, noughties, early 2000s, that is Justice League versus Avengers. A big crossover. It's fantastic. It's really good. And it helps you know, sort of, you know, to know a wee bit about the history of either team. I'd recommend the Justice League to anyone, but pick your era. But pick, uh, pick the time because it's been going. Pick your it's ear? been going since <laughs> 1960. So how long has it been going? For Four, 57, 57, 57. 57 years. So in a couple of years' time, it'll be 60 years. Justice League International is 30 years old. Is that old? Is 30 years old old? I Just that know. comic. I know. I know you don't think forty five is old. I think you forty five is quite young and yeah, and groovy. yeah, sure. And some people don't like the way you said that. <laughs> Maybe someday you'll be reading some of my Justice League uh, comics. Well, I won't. Why? Why won't you do it? Because <laughs> I don't want to. You she doesn't like comics. Ah, but she said she couldn't sleep last night, so she sat up with me and watched the first what forty minutes of Iron Man. What did you think? It was weird. Did you like our man yeah, Mark I, I One did, suit? I didn't really like the first Iron Man that much. Yeah. I preferred I preferred the other ones. Oh, it, oh. It, was just like, there, it was a lot of him in the desert and all mucky and and then it lasted about two minutes and then it, and then it fell apart. Yeah, so. the Mark One suit. Right. Anyway, this has been Mark's Mess podcast, brought to you by the letter J. All characters are property of their owners and not us. Maybe if you would like to be like Caroline and write to us. Maybe if you'd like to tell us your favorite Justice League incarnation, or maybe you want you've got it's a better J. It's a. Is that not a flower? Yeah, we'll go with that. It's a coronation twit. Or if you want to tell us another J that we should have, or you think we should have covered, or that you that particularly like. we would know, because oh. half of the things we don't know we talk about. Jabba the Hutt. What? That's in Star Wars. Yeah, so you know the, that J. Uh, maybe, Jelly. You, maybe you'd like to contact us by email. MyMarksMess at gmail.com. On Twitter. At Marksmess Podcast without the T. Or on our webpage, marksmesspodcast.blogspot.com. 
or on our Facebook page. Mark's Mess Podcasts. And Can I just say something? Yeah. You used to steal all the fame. Yes. You used to say all of that. Because I'm cool. No, you're not. You're but not. You, two, you two have been listening to our past episodes. Yeah. Yes. Wait, what? We listened to number A and well, you're very did. loud. Like, yeah. and we're like, no, no, no. You're not like, you're like, <laughs> yeah. I had to take the earphones out because she was laughing so much at one point. Yeah. At least we're consistent with Josh Woodward and we thank him for the Hello, music Josh from joshwoodward.com. So next next time, what are we going to do for Kay? Me! We'll hopefully find something other than just Catherine to talk about because that might not be a very long podcast. <laughs> and we will see you next time. How are you going to say goodbye in a Justice League way? The Flash. Goodbye. Aquaman. <laughs> Wonder Woman. Goodbye! <laughs> Martian Manhunter! Hey,